What's up guys? Welcome to this week's video. Uh, it's holiday Thanksgiving week and with it being a holiday and Andrew and Judah have been sick for the last few days. So we ain't really been doing anything worth filming. So we wanted to come to you guys this week and just do kind of a Q and A. A lot of the questions that we get asked all the time, wanted to kind of go over them real quick and then talk about some of the changes that are about to take place on termite and why we're going to make those changes. Question number one is, why are we swapping and getting rid of the AMC 360? There's a lot of purists out there, uh, a lot of guys who, who love these motors, and I'll be honest with you, I don't really have necessarily a problem with them. I, I mean, Termite has never left us stranded. It left Andrew right after we got it. There was a fusible <laughs> link that was like already appeared to be halfway burned at some point a long time ago. Um, and it finished uh, separating one day when she was driving it right after we got it. But other than that, we've gone to Arkansas. We've, I mean, just multiple camping trips, multiple off-road trips, and it's always been fine. Um, so I know, you know, I, I get it. Look, I'm a, being a Mopar guy with my Super V, I'm a big all-original guy. I get it. But to me, what it boils down to is, what are you going to be doing with that vehicle? that's that's really the number one thing um if we were just going to be running around town in termite and just camping here locally i would never even consider a swap i would not worry about it i would just keep doing what this thing is doing because it's perfectly fine doing that but we want to go out west we want to go all over the country we want to we want to go far we want to go big 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 trips and though I, I do believe this motor would go and come it would go and come very slowly and very expensively so for us being the fact that termite is not just a run around town it's not just a uh, local thing we're wanting to do big long trips swapping in a more modern in engine just makes more sense um it, it's just a reliable thing but also power and efficiency i mean these motors i think were 145 horsepower or something like that and the hemi that we're swapping to is 345 horsepower so you know it's you you're more than doubling your output there so it just makes more sense on that front um so when it comes to swaps in anything it depends on what you're doing with that vehicle that's that's really what it boils down to and then secondly and i don't mean to be rude about this but it's this is my vehicle that's their vehicle <laughs> They can do whatever they want to do with it. I don't know why it bothers people. I mean, but I'm also that guy too. Why did they do that? 100% you're that but, guy. But, you know, at the end of the day, I have to tell myself that. Hey, well, that's <laughs> theirs. I didn't pay nothing on it. I'm not going to pay nothing on it. So let them do whatever the heck they want to do. <laughs> so question number two is, why are we going with a Hemi and not an LS? Big reason why, I'm a Mopar guy. And you will never see me ever. And I'm just going to go on record stating it. You will never see me putting an LS in any of my vehicles, okay? I may help a buddy do his or something like that. I'm a Mopar guy. I'm a deep, deep rooted Mopar guy. And so for me, I just, I'm, I'm, if I'm gonna swap anything in here, it's gonna be a Hemi. That's just the way that I do. I know they may cost a little more. I understand all of that stuff, but you will never see me put an LS in one of my vehicles. No matter how many times you comment, no matter how many things you wanna say about it, it will never happen. Now we've had lots of comments too. We have lots of comments. Why not an LS? Why not an LS? Why not LS? Would be a lot cheaper. You know. And now let me say that doesn't mean that I hate the LS motor platform. They're good, reliable, perfectly fine motors. So for all of you guys out there that have LSs in your stuff, that's fine. I I literally do not care. It's that's perfectly acceptable. I totally understand. Um, but for me, I'm not just a I'm not a guy who just started getting into cars or a guy who's just into Wagoneers. I've been into cars my entire life. Before I got into off-road stuff, I mean, I've done everything from low riding to muscle cars to you name it. And I've just been a Mopar guy through and through the entire time. So for me, um, when I think of a swap, my mind just immediately goes 5.7 Hemi because I am familiar with the motors and stuff like that too. So. You want to know why are we doing a Hemi? Do I think it's better than the LS? No, not necessarily. I'm just a Dodge guy. I'm just a Mopar guy. So I'm just naturally going to go 5.7 Hemi route. 
Now let's talk about the stuff that's gonna get changed on Termite in 2023. So we started our channel at the end of 2020. So 2021, that majority of that year, you saw us building the roof rack, the winch mount, the tire carrier. Uh, you saw us doing all of that kind of fabrication stuff. Every bit of that's gonna get changed. <laughs> um, so, so this next year is gonna be kind of version 2.0 of 2021. Uh, the winch mount, whenever we do the hemi swap, the whole front clip is going to be off. So we are going to figure out and build a hidden winch where it will be in here. And my goal is that the fair lead will be coming out of the front bumper. So you won't see the winch at all. You'll just see the fair lead coming out of the front bumper. Um, I've seen two people do it, so I know it can be done. I just got to figure out how. There's no blueprints on what exactly they've done. I know there were some from the factory that brought the, the winch line out from the bottom of the bumper. I, I do know that. Um, and if push comes to shove, we'll, we'll go that route. But I really want to try to get the winch coming out of the bumper. I just think that looks super cool. So this is going to get redone, and the front of termite will look back pretty much factory, with the exception of this will be in the middle of the front bumper. Need to clarify that this has worked well. Yeah, it's, it's just not, not what it's we not want. A working thing. It's I more just, like a visual. Uh, yeah, aesthetic. it's just more aesthetic, aesthetic things. Um, yeah. That's one thing that's going to get changed. That'll probably be the first thing because it's going to get done when the Hemi gets done. Yeah. All right. So the next thing that's getting changed is the roof rack. There's nothing wrong with this roof rack. Roof rack. It's not doing anything weird. It's not not doing its job. Um, but you know, you build something and then you look at it for a long period of time and you see ways and things you just want to change and do better. So the essential, the, the main structure of the rack itself is going to stay, but I am going to change these feet to something wider to where there's a little more footprint in the, in the rail besides just such a, a fine point. This has worked well. We've slept how many times over the last mm -hmm. couple of years. Uh, and it, with this, all this, I've been fine. But I just want to kind of beef that up a little bit. And I also want to just probably going to take these off because we rarely use them, uh, honestly. And so probably take these off and go with some kind of lighting, though, that will maybe mount directly to the rack itself just so it lights up right here. Because we, we, we rarely, we haven't used these as much as we thought we was going to use them. So I'll probably take these off and redo the lighting to where it lights more just up under the tent, stuff like that at night. More flood than spot. Yeah, I guess. So the rack is gonna get redone, reshaped up a little bit. Plus when we get, we're gonna be doing our trailer this year. So I wanna make the rack where when the tent's not up here, we can store uh, hard boxes or something like that that has like recovery gear and, and things like that. So it's gonna get some little minor tweaks and changes uh, this coming up here as well. So the next thing that's gonna get changed uh, is the tire carrier. Now we've got a few emails from you guys that are wanting us to build you one of these. Uh, if I haven't emailed you back, I apologize for that. We've just had so much going on, sitting down and, and figuring this stuff together. I just have not had a chance to do it. So if you have asked me to build you one, just because I haven't emailed you back is not a no. Just give me a, a chance to us to get some stuff <laughs> out of our way first but the first the main problem with this carrier is i don't know why i thought that i had to build this out of quarter inch thick square tube i don't know why i thought i had to go quarter inch thick uh, it does not have to be ne <laughs> nearly that beefy so this thing is heavy way heavier than it should be um as far as its function it's functioning fine um, it's just really, really, really heavy. Um, so I want to basically build the same thing just with a, maybe one eighth thick, somewhere around in that area would be plenty strong and it would cut the weight in half if, if we went to that. So that's something we're going to do. The other thing is after I built this, I had a few people comment and say I should have put the tire on the driver's side. And... I was kind of like in my head, like, wow, what's, what's the difference? Well, you, can, you can't see. So it is, the tire is directly in my line of sight. So if you are gonna build one for whatever, put it on the driver's side. You'll be able to see a lot better. So kind of contemplating on making a twin carrier when we do that. 
and have this side for like fuel, water, stuff like that. And then put the tire on this side, which I would have to build a, another, you know, maxing, matching hinge system to where the carrier would open like this. And we'd have tire over here, water and stuff over there, fuel and stuff. That's a thought, you know, I don't know if I'm gonna do the twin or if I'm just gonna rebuild the same thing just with lighter weight material. Just have to see when we kind of get there. But this nonetheless is, is gonna get, for the most part, just copied just with a lot thinner, lighter weight uh, material. So that's gonna get done. All right, so the final thing the termite's gonna get done this coming up year is some kind of rock slider down here. Now the rockers have rust in them. This is the only rust left on termite is, is in the rockers. So I'm gonna replace them while we're at it. So we'll be putting new rockers on. And while we're there doing that, we're gonna build some kind of slider to protect the rocker and, and, and stuff like that. Because when the Hemi's in, we have plans to go to Colorado, go to Utah, all everywhere out west. And so, which even in Arkansas, sliders are a handy thing to have. So that's gonna be something that is gonna get on the docket this year as well. So there's gonna be a lot of, a lot of fab uh, and stuff happening on termite because even though we haven't got the Hemi in yet, we're already planning our first big trip uh, in termite. Um, so we're kind of already setting goals out there. That, hey, you know, we're gonna get this finished up and uh, has a trip plan too in the midst of all of this. So when's the Hemi swap happening? Uh, probably in the next couple of weeks. Uh, we're gonna get through Thanksgiving. Um, we are, we have enough money now to order the wiring harness as well as the Dakota Digital gauge cluster. So we're kind of waiting on Black Friday and Cyber Monday to see if maybe a deal goes on. So we're, that's really all that we're waiting on. But once those are ordered, termites go on another knife. So we were wanting to do a final hurrah trip with the old 360, but it's just not gonna happen. Time's just not allowing it. So here in the next couple of weeks, guys, you'll see the video where we're gonna be taking the whole front clip off and, and diving right into this thing. The Hemi's ready to go. Um, it's, it's all there ready. So once we get that wire and harness ordered and once the, the gauge cluster and stuff is there, that's the final two big, big, big expensive things that we need. And I'll turn my, it's gonna get a Hemi in it. So I think that's it guys. Thank y'all as always for watching. Happy Thanksgiving to you and yours. Uh, we hope you guys have a good one. Other than that, we'll see you next week.